Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Setham and welcome back to another video guide for Ark Survival Evolved. Today in this video, folks, as the title suggests, I will be showing you how to tame a plesiosaur. Now, of course, you can do this without the use of a trap, but I prefer using a trap because once its torpor reaches a high enough level, it will want to swim away, and the plesiosaurs do come in groups of two, so a trap just makes it that much more easier. Of course, that does mean that it will be more costly to tame a plesiosaur, so I suggest building a trap in an area where you know that they spawn. With that being said and done, this is a knockout tame, meaning you will have to knock it out and put food in its inventory and wait for it to tame. You will also need uh, narcotics with you, and I have already set up the foundation for the trap. It is an 8x8 eight eight square foundation, so I've got a ring of foundations on the outside, which is where I'll place some dinosaur gateways, and from side to side I've gone with more foundations. That is to give us the structural base to place ceilings as we do want to enclose the trap. So once you have that set up, uh, you can then start building the trap. In order to ride the plesiosaur, you will need a saddle, and it does have two types of saddle, as you will see in a bit. So it has the saddle that you will unlock at 64 and 84, the second type of saddle, which is a, of course, a platform saddle that will allow you to craft on it and build a structure on it should you choose to. They are fairly expensive to craft, however, they also do offer the plesiosaur a bit of armor once you put them on, so definitely worth having it. You cannot ride it without that anyways. In terms of kibbles, it prefers the superior kibble. And obviously now let's get into the building of the trap. Now you want to place your behemoth gateways, and we're going to use four behemoth gateways and gates for this. You want to place them right at the edge of the foundation, so that is too far. You can see that if I go too far, it will snap onto the ground. You want them to snap onto the foundation. On the sides, what I like to do is I like to place the um, behemoth gateways on the side slightly further from the one I just placed. That will allow a small gap for a human to swim through, and that's pretty much it. Now, do bear in mind that if a human or a player can swim through, so can an electric forest. So do keep that in mind. So that is kind of the gap that you want. It does allow for quick and uh, easy access in and out of the trap. There will be another entrance and exit placed into the trap, which I'll show you later on. You don't have to do this, therefore, but I prefer it. I prefer having several ways in and out of the trap should I need to. Now, this is a force tamed plesiosaur that I played around with. I'm not going to keep it, I don't really need it, it is a low level, it was just here and I just found it easier to force tame it than to actually try and kill it, but I will eventually kill it anyways. So same thing on the other side, you want that gap if you are opted to go for it. The gap should be just wide enough for you to swim through like I've just done there, so always test it. And right at the back we don't need a gap, that was just to give us those additional entrances and exits into the trap we may need to exit the trap and deal with some problems and then get back into it as you'll see this trap does have quite a few entrances and exits so that is worth keeping in mind then we are going to go with 13 pillars tall now do bear in mind that the behemoth gateway tends to be 12 tall so you want to go with 13 pillars tall that will of course make the the lid or the top of the trap slightly higher than the behemoth gate allowing you to have another entrance and exit and I've just realized now that this gate is slightly lower so I'll have to fix it that means it's not snapped onto the foundation but rather to the ground once you've placed the gate down which is fairly easy to do there's no point in showing that we're gonna start building up the ceiling so we're gonna go in a square on the outer edge of the gate so we'll do this. Now I like to put the main entrance opposite to where I placed the pillars just because. So now that's a bit too tight. And you'll see why I do this in a little bit once I finish with the ceiling. So this is what you'll want to do. Now the reason behind that is I will be able to enter an exit trap with the creature that I will be kiting it with. For the purposes of this video, I will be using an anglerfish that I tamed in a previous video. 
So that is big enough for the anglerfish to slip in and out. Notice that there is a gap between the ceiling and the behemoth gateways. That is also a good place for the player to get in and out of the trap. That does also mean that electric force can get through. So keep that in mind. Make sure the area is clear as well. So that is that. The trap is done. Well, so this is my anglerfish right here. It's got 120 speed. I can outswim most of the creatures in the ocean. So while the gap between the gate and the ceiling isn't large enough to allow an anglerfish through, it will allow Electroforce to get through. And so that is the reason for that hole right there. I can enter and exit the trap on my anglerfish as and when I please it. I can always close it off by just putting two ceilings and that will keep other anglerfish out of the trap. So now I have started chitin so um, I was gonna call them mosasaurs but they're plesiosaurs. Don't forget they tend to travel in groups of two as you can see right behind me and before you start what I suggest doing is that you open up at least one gate if not two in a straight line so that will allow you to swim through the trap. As you get towards the second gate you will want to shut it but you will also want to wait up for the plesiosaurs to get close to you. If you swim too far from them they will tend to split up and kind of go around the trap. So you do want to time it correctly a bit, but if you did not shut the gate, or sorry, open the gate, that is not necessarily a problem. You can always open it and then shut it again. I'm going to see if there's anything in there. I can't see any plesiosaurs in there. Right, so they're swimming around. That's fine. They did not go into the trap. I'm going to get back on my anglerfish and kite them around the trap once again. This does sometimes happen. Especially if you are kiting them from quite a fair distance. Now I'm going to align myself with the entrance into the trap. Get to this, open the gate. They're quite close behind me, that's fine. Just kind of sneak through, just push through the exit. Then swim around, shut the gate. Go back to where you exited so that the plesiosaurs don't actually try and focus their aggro on you. That's it. They are now trapped in. I don't see one plesiosaur to be loose. And that is the purpose of the trap. That is why it's so large. You can actually trap both plesiosaurs. You can kill the one you don't want or knock them both out. Really up to you. This exact same trap should work for the purposes of taming a mosasaur. So it does have several applications in the water biome. Once they are in, you can then park your anglerfish at the top of the trap. It's normally where I like to keep it. It's easier for me to remember where I left my uh, anglerfish should I need to get to it quickly and make a quick escape. There are the stats on the anglerfish which I wanted to show you before so I have 120 speed on it which kind of allows me to outswim most of the creatures or pretty much anything in the seas. The other purpose of this gap that we have here is basically to be a peephole so that we can shoot the trank arrows through them. And I can see both plesiosaurs, but you can also shoot them from the other gaps as well. When their torpor is high enough, the plesiosaurs will want to swim away. However, they cannot do that because they are in the trap. Also, be very careful. There is a very subtle animation when they get knocked out. You do not want to put more trank arrows in them after they've been knocked out as you will lose taming effectiveness which will affect the amount of levels that you'll get as well as the stats obviously getting fewer levels means you get fewer points in stats so it does make your tame a lot weaker now i have a 150 and i think a 35 plesiosaur in here and as you can see when it's knocked out its flippers kind of just flop down both of them are now knocked out. I'm going to tame both of them. I don't really want the second one. It is a low level. But that's that done. So I'm going to go and get my anglerfish. And then swim it into the trap. And then close off the trap. To kind of give us that wonderful privacy. Whilst the taming takes place. Also what the plesiosaur tends to do. Once it's knocked out. Is it will more or less 
or have its head pointed downwards, which is what I wanted to show there, but most often you won't see it from within the trap because their head is often sticking out. So I'll go and... Actually, I'll put food in this guy. So, as I've said, you'll want to have some narcotics with you. You will also want to have the superior kibble. It does like that, and it is best for taming these. You can also use prime meat if you have it, but it does spoil fairly quickly. Now, there are two ways you can do this. You can put the kibble or food in in the plesiosaur's inventory and wait for it to tame out or if you don't have kibble and are going to use prime meat to tame it then you can use the starving technique have a raft nearby with a refrigerator on it that has the prime meat the starving technique is still a good technique to use so that means you will starve out the plesiosaur sufficiently so that when you put all of the food in its inventory it will instantly consume it and therefore instantly tame for this I do recommend using Dodo Dex. It is an amazing app that you can find both for Android and iOS devices, and it will help you with taming creatures in the game. It will give you all of the information that you need to know with regards to taming them, starving them, and even breeding. And after a long time of being patient and babysitting, you will end up having your plesiosaur. This is fairly tanky to have in the water, however, it is still weak to creatures such as the Electrophorus and the Jellyfish, so do keep that in mind. It is weaker than the Mosasaur, however, it is a fairly tanky and fast swimmer in the ocean, especially when you sprint. So I'm going to put the Plesiosaur that I don't want inside a cryopod. You can, of course, cryopod these and store them in cryo fridges should you want to. Just be careful not to throw them out on dry land. They are not creatures designed for dry land. So I'm going to mount my Plesiosaur and uh, I'll take it back to base. You can remove those two ceilings that you placed. So then you can reuse the trap to tame some more stuff in the seas. That is pretty much how the strap works. It is pretty efficient, as you've seen. Sometimes you may need to reposition, but that is just how things work in the game, and it's not the trap's fault. And that is pretty much it for this guide, folks. I do hope that you have enjoyed it and found it useful and informative. If you have, please don't forget to support me and the channel by hitting that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already for more similar content from myself. And if you have just subscribed, why not check out some of my other videos and guides here on this channel. Who knows, you might just enjoy them. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you get notified when I upload new videos and content to the channel. Also, for those interested, you can always find me on the Setopia Discord. Links to this you can find down below in the video description, as well as in a pinned comment from myself. Until next time, stay safe, folks.